Continuing on with preliminaries in R, next we're going to talk about this idea of a package system. So I like to think of this kind of like a toy train that you might have had and played with a, as a child. Um, so if you get the base set, you just get something really simple. It's just an oval that goes around. And it's the same idea. What you've installed so far with your base R installation is just the basic piece that a lot of other packages can build on. Now, it's got a lot of nice statistical algorithms in it and other things, but very few people use just that base R. Instead, it's kind of like when you get the grandparents coming in and, and Christmas and everybody uh, starts giving gifts and all of a sudden you have a lot of other things you can add into that very base package. In the same way, there's a whole ecosystem of extensions to R that are called packages. And these add on functionality and some of them are new statistical techniques. Some of them are new ways of, of managing or visualizing your data. And then some of them are very specific to a, to a certain discipline. You can think of a package really just like that, the box that you get maybe in the mail. It's just a way of putting together some pieces that you might want to use to add on. So um, a lot of times it will include new functions that you might want to use for more functionality in R. It usually will include some documentation too, like help files and tutorials, which are called vignettes in R. And sometimes it can include uh, data sets. So these can be example data sets that, that the package maintainer is using to let you see examples of how to use the package. But it can also, the package itself can be a way to share data. So occasionally you will get um, packages where the whole point is to share data and then the data might be the main component kind of in that box that you get. You can get R packages from a few places. In this course, we'll be focusing a lot on CRAN. Um, I'll talk about that more in just a minute. But if you're doing a lot of stuff with bioinformatics and with genomics, you might find Bioconductor a very good source. Uh, people are sharing packages more and more through GitHub, and some of those are completed packages, and some are ones that are still in development that you can go ahead and play around a little bit with. You can also make these yourself and share them among your collaboration team. They can be shared even just as zip files rather than going through a repository. So I mentioned CRAN. This is the Comprehensive R Archive Network, and this is the website where you got your original installation of R. So it also serves as, as a point for getting lots of other packages, and it now has over um, 10,000 packages. This uh, I've included a tweet here. This is from 2017, and uh, with Dirk Edelbutel, the two of us that worked on a package together, which just happened to make it into that 10,000th. But this is all to say that, that this is an ecosystem where there are loads loads of things available. And that's part of why you don't get all of that when you initially install R. It would be a huge, huge software download if you got everything. So instead, what you do is you start with base R, and then when you want to pull in these other packages, you can install them one at a time. So let's talk about that installation uh, process. The main way that we're going to get them, certainly for this class, is by installing them from CRAN, that, that large repository. There is a function directly in BaseR that lets you do it called install.packages. So you just run that and then you put in the name of the package. So I'm going to show an example here with an interesting package called phone number. This is pretty basic, so it's very easy to understand. But if you remember, um, especially back when we had phones on the wall, the keypads have numbers that go along with them. And sometimes different companies will make a word out of their number so it's much easier to remember. But there's this concordance between the numbers on the keypad and sets of three or four letters that go with them. And so what this package does is it lets you take a name and it'll give you the numbers that would show up on, on um, the keyboard to make up that name. So we'll look at that a little bit. But to get this onto your computer in the first place, it didn't come with base R, you need to do install.packages. So let's look at that. If we go into R, we can do install.packages, and then we do package is the, the option here, and then we need to put in the package name. And uh, for this, it's very important to get the spelling right. And it's also really important to make sure that you've got the capitalization right. If you have a letter capitalized, it's not in the, the real name of this package, then this won't work. So it'll run a little bit. And it does need to be online because it's pulling this from CRAN, which is an online resource, onto your computer. So if you get an error message, it might be because your computer was not online. 
All right, so this is what I was just mentioning. You, you do need to make sure you're online to be able to install the package. And once you install it, it's brought it onto your computer and you won't need to install it again, at least until you get a new version of R or a new computer or the package maintainer updates it. So I've drawn this little cartoon of the idea, again, just to illustrate this, because I think that this is something that can be confusing for new uh, users. So you can think of CRAN as kind of being up in this cloud up here. And maybe there's a package with a name that you want to pull down. So when you do install that packages, like, like um, I just showed the example of, it will pull that down onto your computer and your computer when it installed base R set aside a special place where it's going to put all of the, the new uh, packages that you install. So it'll save it there on your computer. So that's the first step in the thing that you only need to do once until you get a new computer or a new version of R. But then when you open up R, a new R session, it will not automatically load all of the code for all the packages that you have. And it's the same idea. There's so many of these, even just of the ones you might want to get, it would take R a long time to load them all if it loaded them all every time it started. And so what it does is it loads base R and a few select packages, but then it wants you to specify exactly which packages you want to load. So every time you open an R session and use that package you installed, you'll need to do a different call, this library call with the same package name. So once you have a package installed, you open the R session and then load the package with that library call. Then uh, this is optional, but you'll probably want to do it the first time you use a new package. You can use vignettes, which again are like a tutorial, and help files to figure out how to use the package. And we'll look at some examples of doing that. And then you can use all of the different functions in the package once you have that set up. So let's look at how this would look for the phone number package. This package has a function called letter to number. And so we can set up a message called hello world, and then we can look and see what numbers that would be in a phone number. So let's go into R and do that. And I will open a script so we would have this for later if we wanted. So we can set up message and set that up as hello world run that. And then just to check, you can see down here that that's been defined. So that's great. Now, if I try to do letter to number with message, it gives me an error. You can see down here, it said that it couldn't find that particular function. And the problem is we have all of the code for it because we installed the phone number package, but we haven't loaded it into this session. So we should come up and if we run library and then do phone number. That will load that. And now if we try to run that again, you can see that it's worked. You can see down here at the console that we've got that number through. And that's because once we do library, it's pulled in all of the functions and now we have any function in that package available for us to use. A lot of packages will come with different help files. One of these that's really useful for getting started is called a vignette, uh, which again is kind of like a tutorial. You can find out all the vignettes that are available for a package by running vignette and then putting in the package name. So let's do that down here at the console and we can do vignette. And then we'll do package equals and the package name in this case again is phone number. And again, it's important to get the spelling right for that. So up here, it showed us the vignettes that are available. And it looks like there's just one with the same name as the package. So then we can open that by doing vignette and doing the name of that vignette. You'll see that it's opened it up over here and you can go through and it's a combination of text and then examples for how to use the, the main functions that are available in this. A lot of times there'll be several vignettes. So in that case, you can specify the topic. Again, you can find out the names by running vignette with just the package. And then once you know that, you can do vignette with the topic and open up the specific one that you want. Packages also include help files. These operate really at the level of the function. So a vignette gives you an overview of the main things the package can do, but then the help file gives you very detailed information for each specific function. You can access that help file by using a question mark followed by the name of the function. So for example, if we wanted to find out more about letter to number, you just put the question mark 
and then that. So we can go and look at that here. Let's do a question mark and then letter to number. All right, over here you can see now that we've opened up a help file, it starts with some general um, descriptions about what it does, an example of the different arguments you could put in, and more information about exactly what you can put in there. So for example, it's uh, specifying that you have to put in a character vector and it can only have length one. And then there are even some examples, and these tend to be examples that should be able to run directly in your R session. So you can copy that and come over and try it, and it should, um, it should let you run it. So that's a good way to explore and see how the functions work.